How's it going, everybody? I'm really happy to. This chair makes so much noise. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab it. Good. All right, how's this? Okay, I'm back. Along with the vlogs that we've been putting out for Doyen artists uh, to try to kind of kick up our uh, video marketing, you know, strategy and add some more content to everybody. Uh, the other thing we're going to be doing is providing videos that talk a lot about, uh, you know, tips or things that we can offer viewers, especially in the film acting industry. Uh, so anything that you know we can teach you that you can take to then further your success uh, as a filmmaker, as an actor, anything, we're very happy to do that. So for me, I have a really good background with acting. I've been acting a long time ever since I was a kid. Um, I started doing like high school theater when I was 14, 15 years old in Michigan and then slowly over the years I got an agent, started auditioning for films, booked a lot of films, eventually moved to Los Angeles where I live now. i um, been doing a lot of work. I booked you know several roles on television, more films. Um, just recently I uh, got a really great voiceover job for a show on Netflix called Extracurricular. Uh, it's a big Korean drama that just got released so I've been you know working on that. Um, I shot a pilot last February for a new comedy that's hopefully coming out this fall um, on a network that's to be decided. Uh, so, you know, I've worked a lot and um, what I've noticed is that the landscape for acting has, has really changed. Because when I was a kid, all you could do was uh, have your head shot, have your agent kind of submit you for work, and then you actually had a physical appointment where you went in and you met with somebody, a casting director, you auditioned for the role. You know, it was all done in person. But nowadays, like so 2020, everything is done virtually. That initial audition that you get as an actor really takes place online. Okay, and the, and the three primary platforms that that happens on are Actors Access, which is a website, like a big database, Casting Networks, or Casting Frontier, okay? And that's for a mix of work. You have theatrical work, television, film, and then you also have commercial work. So out of all those three platforms, you have all these actors that need to make profiles now, you know, have their headshot and their resume all compiled there. And then you have to have a video reel that you need to make uh, with examples of your work over the years or things that you've done that can kind of give you a boost in the eyes of a casting director who will then want to bring you in for a physical audition. And then worst of all, you have these things called self tapes now, which because because of technology that everybody has, you know, with cameras and your smartphones. You have to actually get the sides first, which sides are the lines for the scene or the character you're auditioning for, and then you have to film yourself doing the scene first. And then if it's good enough, you know, once you send it in, the casting director or whoever views it, that's when they bring you in for like a callback or a, you know, second round audition or whatever you want to call it. The process has really changed a lot. It's, it's not the same that it used to be. And the real differentiator that a lot of actors need to know is that your self-tape is the very first introduction, it's the first layer of you know your success that, that they're going to be depending on. So you really need to have great self-tape auditions in order to make an impact, you know, to get your foot in the door. So let's say you get an audition, but you're making a self-tape and it looks terrible, chances are they're not going to bring you in. You could be a great actor, you know, you could do a really great job of the scene, but if your self-tape is bad or if it's distracting or the light is bad or it's the sound isn't good, those are all factors that are going to be, you know, eliminating your chances. For today, I'm here to help you kind of create the best self-tape you can make, okay? And I don't want you to worry about not having the right technology or not having the, the means to be able to do that yourself because there are a lot of easy things you can do to make sure that your self-tape is really great or or at least, at the very least, visually pleasing, audibly pleasing, so that you can, you know, enhance your chances of, of booking a role, or at least getting your foot in the door with, with somebody important. There's a few things we could talk about. Um, okay, so first, let me describe to you how a self-tape comes about in the first place. All right, so if you're a working actor, okay, if you're a serious actor and you're putting all the right things together to get yourself as many opportunities to work as you can. You have a profile on Actors Access, Casting Frontier, and Casting Networks, okay, based on where you live. If you live in LA, you should be on LA Casting, which is a subset of Casting Networks. If you're in New York, I think it's NY Casting. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. And you should know up front that you have to pay money to be a part of these groups, okay? It's a challenge, you know, as an actor. It's not a lot of things come free. 
You know, when I was younger, I struggled with that a lot myself. You had to pay, you know, a monthly subscription for this, a monthly subscription for this, whatever. You know, you can definitely know the right people and get auditions through contacts and networking, but a great way for somebody who has no contacts whatsoever, if you're just coming into a blind and you have passion and instinct and talent for it, you need to be on these websites. First of all, if you have an agent, that signs with you, let's say you live in New Orleans or something and you find an agent somewhere in town and they want to sign you. Chances are they're going to make you get on these profiles because nationwide these are where a lot of production companies and casting directors and departments are putting out their um, notices for jobs and auditions, right? So you need to be on that database so your agent can then go in and submit things for you. Okay, so that's really important for you to understand. So get on those sites, all right? You should also try to get on IMDb with anything, any credits you can make. You know, if you have uh, content that you want to put on YouTube or uh, on Vimeo or something like that, you know, make, make those projects yourself. Try the best that you can. Get something out there so you have something to show other people, and then you can link those things to these profiles, okay? So, so let's say that you've just, you're on Actors Access, right? You get... A notification that you have an audition. Okay, that's great. Congrats. You did an awesome job. So, in that breakdown, it will say somewhere there that like, okay, this is the, you know, form, this is the type of character that we are we're looking for. This is a brief description about the character. And then down below, you should see something that says self-tape instructions. Okay, so they're giving you the instructions of how you should film your self-tape. So whatever they say in that, in that you know, description, you should follow that to a T. Okay, and that should be your first roadmap you should look at whenever you're getting ready to film an audition. All right, so based on those instructions, most of the time it will say, start with a slate at the beginning of your video, which is a, a slate is a pretty straightforward way of just saying uh, you need to just say your name, you know, who you're represented by, where you're from, maybe your height, and your age. It'll say in there, it should. Any any good self tape that somebody requests from you should have that information there. Okay, and then once that's done, um, it'll then say make sure you film, you know, with like a blank background, which means, you know, your, your surroundings are just blank. No color, no distraction. Like, like this office here, like right here, probably isn't the best arrangement for a self tape okay because it's distracting there's things going on and this is this is just for ambiance that i'm putting together after the the background it'll say have somebody read the lines with you okay because when you do a, a self tape audition you should have your camera person who's standing behind the camera hitting record for you also be the one who's holding the lines and being your scene partner so that you don't have to do anything crazy like dub your own voice in or you know make it really awkward. You should have someone read the lines with you all the time. I mean, find a friend. You can log on FaceTime nowadays and just like tell, send your buddy the script and say, hey, will you just like log on and you can set the camera up. I just need you to read with me while I do the scene. Can you do that? It's, it's that easy. I know it's a little like frustrating because you have to maybe inconvenience people to help you. But you know, if you have the right friends or if you have other friends who are actors, that's a great exercise for the both of you to get together and work on something that you're passionate about and develop those skills so that you can, you know, be really good at it and increase your chances of, of booking a role. So you should always have somebody read with you. Um, and the other thing is, you know, pay attention to wardrobe. They should say in there too, like, you know, character wardrobe. If it's cashier number one, you know, have it, wear a vest. You know, a simple t-shirt with no logos or something like that. You want your costume wardrobe to be very plain too, okay? You don't want bright colors or anything crazy because you want to almost create sort of a neutral presence, right? That they can easily, you know, imagine whatever sort of uh, inferences they want to put onto you that, you know, they can match with the role they're looking for. Does that make sense? You know, you, you can't, you don't want to like wear anything too bright or have anything too crazy going on to the point where it like jars their imagination of being able to place you into something else. Okay, so keep that in mind. Be neutral, you know, make sure there's no distractions, have somebody read with you, and those are your first important notes, okay? And also, you know, you have to consider that with COVID-19 being such a huge thing right now, a lot of casting directors are, are acknowledging the fact that people don't have, like, sophisticated equipment to do these self-tapes. And uh, tons of them are even saying in the breakdown, you know what, forget about your environment, doesn't matter. You can use your smartphone to film, whatever. Just get us a self-tape of you reading it, you know, reading for this role and we're gonna consider you. So if it says something like that in your breakdown too, then by all means, you know, you can, you can execute your audition that way. Although I encourage you 
to be as professional and and creative as you can in the process so you can create like a really nice clean uh, aesthetic you know something that looks really good for them uh, just shows your professionalism you know it's such a, a tough time too that being said let's let's get into a few things let's uh, why don't I show you what a bad self tape looks like okay and uh, for the sake of people maybe not having like a really nice mirrorless camera or you know film camera or anything like that we are going to do the entire thing just with a smartphone okay this is an iphone se that i just got the other day and uh you know it's very basic it's like any other iphone 8 or iphone 7 that you might have um you can use just this device right here to make all the self tapes you need so let's let's see what a bad self tape looks like okay let's let's check this out okay so right away what, what are a few things we can kind of look at that maybe don't look that good, right? We have, uh, you know, some stuff on the wall over here. We have this big sheet that's sort of distracting. It's like this big pattern that it's like, what the hell is this, right? And then you kind of have some picture frames over here. All right, plus you can maybe look at my shirt and it's just like, why? I'm just kind of wearing this like raggedy shirt that maybe I do gardening in or something. Now, if you were auditioning for a role that said like, you know, you were supposed to be a homeless man or a bum or you know, a, a hippie surfer or something like that. Maybe a shirt like this would, would work, okay? But for the most part, if you're auditioning, I think this role I have here, uh, it's a past audition. I think this is for, uh, this guy's supposed to be a professor, okay? So do I look like a high school professor? No, I don't, right? So right away, look at the notes that a casting director has given you, whatever you see online there, use the notes. You know, if it says uh, just plain t-shirt or plain sweater, you know, put on just like a blue shirt or something like that. This is not great. Okay, the next thing that you might see is I'm, I'm actually holding the sides in my hand. Okay, and this is kind of a big no-no. You don't want to do this. You know, you have all the time. Well, maybe not a lot of time. But you usually get a day, maybe two days. Sometimes you get like a few days to do a self-tape at home. And you should always memorize the lines. So you shouldn't have to worry about these. Let your scene partner be the one who's holding these, you know, reading with you. That way you can be completely present and physical in the scene. You know, you won't have to rely on the paper. Plus you won't hear the noise of the paper rattling around in your hands and stuff when you're trying to do the scene. Um, so right away, like this is not a great self tape and I've seen worse. Trust me. I, we just cast a film um, that's going to be coming out soon. And we had a lot of actors submit uh, tapes to us, you know, so we could try to meet with people and expand our network. And we would get videos where like the framing is like this. It's like, you know, like they're hunched into the doing the scene and, and it looks bad. Or or you, you get somebody who always does a scene like up close like this. Like, yeah, this is, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, Hector. It's just a dream. It's bad, it's bad right? You can't, you don't want to be doing that. You want to have like, a, a great rule of thumb is, see my framing here? I kind of have like mid stomach right here. This is where the frame ends. And then it it ends here, and I actually have a little bit of headroom up above. Okay, this is a great frame. The frame is actually pretty good that you want. You don't want to be like you don't want to be like hugged into the the frame like this, or or it's just your head because casting needs to be able to see you know for the most part your torso and and the way you can move your upper body. So backing off of that a little bit, having being able to stand straight up. Having room for your arms to move is great. Um, in some cases, they might even want a full body shot. You know, so if that's the case, you could back the camera up. Try to expose your wall as much as you can. That way you can get your legs and your feet into the frame as well. But for the most part, this, this frame that you see here is exactly what you want. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is... Aside from the framing, everything else in here is is not that great. Okay, so let me let's let's revamp this space a little bit and let's show you what a good self tape looks like. Okay, hang on. So pretty easily, I just kind of re-moved everything around. You know what I mean? So you, that, that sheet that was uh, up down here before, all I did was roll it up and then I, I just clipped it at the top. So now that's, that's out of the way, right? I punched the framing in just slightly and then I'm actually just standing closer to the wall. So now you don't see any of those picture frames and there's a lot less distraction going on. Changed my shirt, have a nice kind of just plain, neutral, dark color, something that sort of pops Against the white wall is really good. You don't want anything like that kind of blends into it. So don't wear like a white sweater or a white shirt or something like that. Um, and now we're kind of in the right environment to, to do something, right? So it's, it's blank, which is good. That way, whoever's watching can, can imagine the surroundings for themselves. And uh, I don't have the sides anymore. I have those lines memorized. So I encourage you to memorize your lines. 
you know, do the best you can. I have my reader on the other side who can read lines with me. And uh, this is how we'd carry out the scene. Okay, so take note of, of this kind of space. Anywhere in your house or bedroom, at a friend's house. Hell, even if you go outside and you see a white wall outside, stand up against it. You can use that environment. Even a neutral color. If you have something that's like, maybe like a pale yellow or a really light tan or something like that. You can, you can use that too. It doesn't have to necessarily be white. But if you have like a white bed sheet. You know, rip it off your bed and tape it up to the wall and then just drape it down. You can stand in front of that. Um, another thing to consider is just the natural light itself that's coming in. So I have this really great window over here. And like right now, it's it's starting to get a little bit dark because I don't know, it's like maybe 4, 30, 5 o'clock here. But for the most part, you have a lot of great natural light that's spilling in, that's illuminating me. It's keeping me, you know, looking good. It's like all the, the light is on my face. It's not dark. Uh, whoever's watching can easily see what's happening, my facial expressions, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, keep those things in mind, okay? And uh, so once you have your environment down, let's let's do like a mock slate, okay? So so you can get a sense of what that is, because I'm sure a lot of people might see that and go like, oh, what the hell is a slate? I'm not sure. So uh, let's let's get into that. Let's do it. Your slate is like it's your first clip that anybody's gonna see. All right, so your person on the other side can easily just you know like go like uh, okay, three, two, one action right they hit the button you can take a breath and then you start your slate which would be hi my name is chase yi uh, i'm represented by the brogan agency i'm based in los angeles california and i'm five foot nine thank you cut right your buddy can hit the pause button finish that's your slate so with something like that you don't even really need to edit or cut anything together because it'll be so clean right you just have the your smile you do your slate Thank you, end recording. So you have that singular clip ready to go. So you should try to think of your filming process in that same, using that same concept because then you won't have to do really any editing. You can just take those individual clips, send them right off to your agent or upload them into Actors Access, which most of the time you would do yourself anyway. Um, so you can easily plan for that. Also, if you do have any kind of film editing software, which we'll get into here in a minute, uh, you can easily string those two things together. So you don't have to cut and chop things up. So keep that in mind. Try to do things really clean, okay? Just like one take, Jake. Be that, you know, be somebody spot on. So that's your slate. Pretty straightforward, done, easy. Okay, then after that, your partner would, you know, you okay, you can maybe like run through the lines one more time, make sure that everything's good, you have everything memorized. And then once you're ready to start, you can do the same exact thing. Have your, you know, you can get in position, be like, okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm like collecting my thoughts. Okay, let's do it, let's get started. You know, you're, you're looking, and, then, and when you're actually doing your scenes, you never wanna look into the lens directly, okay? For your slate, it's okay, because you're addressing the camera, right? Before your actual self-tape read, don't look into the lens. You wanna look past the lens at your reading partner, wherever they're standing. They should stand like right behind the camera, maybe a little bit more to the right, you know, so you can kind of look at an angle like this at them. You don't want them sitting like way over here. So you only have your profile, you know, you want like the front of your face to be getting captured, right? So have your reader be either offset camera, I think that would be right for you or camera left, okay? Pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, so I'd be reading with my partner here, you know, they'd say action, boom, they hit the button. Recording, we start the scene, scene ends, boom, end recording. So you have one clean take, okay? All right, so uh, let's say your self-tape's finished, you did your scene, had everything memorized, it looks good, nice and clean environment, no distractions, lighting is decent. Now you're ready to piece it together, upload it to the right platform, okay? So let's take a look at what that step is like. All right, so now we're back to the editing station, okay? You have your self-tape, it's already ready to go, and now you're ready to upload it online. Okay, and, and I can't stress this enough. I, I understand how challenging it is to, to execute this aspect of a self-tape audition because not a lot of people have, uh, you know, the equipment to be able to easily, like, edit films, upload them, get them online. But I can tell you this only because I've learned the hard way myself, okay? I have been, like, the quintessential struggling 
LA actor when I first moved here. All right, I lived in my car for like the first six to eight months I was in Los Angeles. Ate nothing but peanut butter sandwiches for, I mean, months. Okay, I sat outside of Starbucks so I could use the Wi-Fi on an iPad. That's all I had to do everything. Um, had no money whatsoever. You know, I, I spent a lot of money like trying to help, uh, trying to get people to help me do self-tape auditions when it was like really becoming a steady thing. But luckily I sort of had the luxury of still being on the, the back nine of getting like in-person auditions. But at the same time, I was like homeless living in my car. I had no money and had terrible clothing and, you know, had a hard time finding some place to shower. I can understand the struggle, you know, that a lot of actors go through, you know, emotionally, physically, and financially to be able to achieve their dreams as an actor. But it is also highly important that you have some kind of like foothold or, or investment that you can make to get yourself really nice equipment. All you need is a laptop, okay? You have a smartphone and a laptop, you can make your dreams come true nowadays. So keep that in mind. Uh, if I were you, if you needed to invest in some technology, go out and buy yourself just like a MacBook Air, okay? Uh, I only say, I only suggest Apple because it has video editing software built into it already that you can use. Even like this phone that I, I just got this phone the other day. Uh, it's a cheap iPhone SE budget, you know, flagship uh, Apple iPhone you can get. It has iMovie preloaded into it, okay? So all those clips that we just got using the phone, I can easily go in there, string them together on here, edit it, export it as its own file, and then send it off to somebody. So just for this, for $400, you can make everything happen. But if you wanna take it a step further, Let's say you even wanna do like writing, you wanna write yourself or write a screenplay or you know, get more involved with filmmaking. You know, invest in like a nice MacBook Pro. Like right here I have an iMac, which is kind of like a little bit more of an upper level investment that you could do for all the things I do, like make music, edit films, write films, you know, put together my self tapes. I do all my own editing for like video reels, uh, voiceover reels, I, I do all my own voiceover stuff, you know, so that's, I think, as an actor nowadays, to be successful, you have to have all these tools, right? You need to be able to execute things at a moment's notice, like different levels of things. So I think it's definitely worth the investment if you can make that happen. But if not, again, all you need is a smartphone, basic laptop, you can do it. So let's get into how I would string that audition together, okay? And I'll show you kind of what it looks like on Actors Access and how to kind of get those self tapes out there. So here, let's revert our attention here. Okay, so uh, I'm doing a little bit of a screen recording here so you can kind of check out and see how everything's going. So these are the these three files right here. I just used AirDrop uh, from iPhone to my computer here to send all three of these to myself, okay? So let's put them on my desktop here. All right, let's close this out. Now, I, like I said, you could use iMovie, anything like that to uh, edit your films. I think when, you know, Movie Maker, I mean, any kind of software, I mean, just go to Google and type in, you know, free film editing software. I mean, something will come up. For myself, I use uh, Final Cut Pro, okay, which is another Apple film editing software that you can buy. It's a little expensive. I don't know, it's like two ninety nine or something. Again, I mean, you have to keep in mind, like, these are things that you kind of have to invest in. I mean, if you're going to join, like, SAG-AFTRA, right, every six months you have dues that you have to pay. Or, you know, with Actors Access and all these these platforms, you have to pay a monthly fee. It's like 20, 25 bucks a month, right? So you have to kind of keep that in mind. So anyway, I have a file in Final Cut already set up uh, for auditions, okay? And, and I know this maybe looks a little complicated, but it's a lot easier than it seems, especially for what, you know, you want to do, which is just put a self-tape together. So I'm going to show you. So I have this library already created, auditions, right? This is all ready to go. So now I just have to import those media files. So... Just like follow me. If you don't know anything about this, like you can just watch this video and use it to do it yourself. So you're going to go up here all the way to this little down arrow here. Okay, click that. That's your import button. Now you can find those three files, which I have them on my desktop. So it's one of these, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so I have all these things here. So let's say I think these are my two audition ones that I put together. So let's select those. Import selected. Done. Right? Again, don't worry about this. Don't this is all just stuff for lighting and you know color grading if you're really gonna get into that, but it's not necessary. So let's look at this first clip. Okay, I'm gonna put this in here. You just click drag it onto the timeline. Done. That's it. Now let's hear what this has to say. Let me make sure my volume's up. Let's find Oh yeah, okay. This was just the uh, this was me explaining. So let's get rid of this actually. Let's go right into this one. I think this is the one I had the slate on. 
Okay, so we're going to drag this one down instead. Let's find the slate. Okay, three, two, one, action, right? They hit the button. You can take a breath. Perfect. So you see that where this is on the timeline? I'm just letting this play out. Okay, this is just playing. Just, you know, this red know, bar is just going three, with the film. Two, so <laughs> you can stop it. And I believe that happened about right here. Okay, so again, I'm not going to show you any of these like really technical things in Final Cut, but if you go over here, click on the clip, just tap on it, right? It's yellow. See this? If you just scroll over to this side, you can just click it and then drag it to wherever you want it to begin. Boom. Done. So now, this will start right before the slate happens, just like this. And then you can start your slate, which would be, hi, my name's... Got it, right? So let's see, we punch that in a little bit more. If you want to zoom in, you can hit command and then the plus sign opens the clip up bigger so we can kind of get a more exact edit, right? Chase Yee. So that's a little too far in. We want to start it right before I start talking. Which is probably around here. Let's see. Hi. So that's right before that sound bite happens. Hi. Boom. Okay. So now we have this. Hi. My name's Chase Yee. Uh, I'm represented by the Brogan Agency. I'm based in Los Angeles, California, and I'm five foot nine. Thank you. Boom, pause, okay? So, same thing here. Uh, you see this little s symbol right here, this little clicker? This is this is actually to change your pointer style, whatever you wanna do. So you can click this and see how it says blade. Go right to blade. And then line it up with where you have your cursor here and you can just click right here. Boom, now this has turned it into its own individual clip. So now we go back here, select. All right, so this is its own thing now. If you move this cursor out of the way, See, this is its own little clip. It's it's separate from this. So this is your slate that you've just created. No big deal. Okay, so now let's say we have, you know, let's see where else we are on this. Okay, so let's just delete this next part. There's really not much going on here. Let's go back to this and let's say, I think we had a little mock, you know, thing of a scene, whatever going on here. Let me see. Okay, let's imagine that this is your scene. Okay, let's just get rid of this. So we're going to trim this down. Okay, well, let's just take the audio. See this little thing? I'm just moving the audio down. Okay, so let's imagine this is your scene. It starts here with your slate. Boom. It's going to go right into the scene here, and then we'll just cut this here, okay? Which, again, you can do this little thing, blade. You can click this and do it. Or if you don't want to have to go through that process, you can hit Command and then the letter B, and then also blade in the spot. So let's just do that. Um, we'll go back to our thing here, and then we'll just delete this. That's gone. Okay, so now let's say this is our little scene. It's 40 seconds. You did your self-tape. Everything looks good. All right, now now that's finished. Uh, the other thing you can do to kind of like really spice up the whole experience is to add some transitions, right? So you can add like a fade in from dark, uh, a little like break in the middle, and then a fade out. In Final Cut, this little section right here, you can click on that. And we're just going to go to this thing called... In here, it's called fade to color. See that? So you're just going to click on this, drag it all the way to the beginning. Okay? Drop it in. All right? Same thing here. You can have another fade to color here, right in the beginning. And then you can add one at the end. Okay? Easy. So now let's rewatch this. You can kind of see how it all plays out. Okay? Hi. My name is Chase Yee. Uh, I'm represented by the Brogan Agency. I'm based in Los Angeles, California. And I'm five foot nine. Thank you. Boom. Okay, your scene is playing out now. It just it just had a nice crossfade from the slate into the scene. Let's imagine that this is your scene. I don't know even what this scene would be about. I'm I'm telling a group of people where to hang all of our curtains, and if they screw up, there's not going to be any responsibility on me. But I'm going to blame all of them. Leave them some terrible reviews. If they get anything on my shirt, I'm going to be super upset. And, you know, they need to talk to me before they hang something up or I'm going to be pissed. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's your scene. And then you have a nice fade out, right? So that's done. And now, now that you're done, all you have to do is go up to here in the corner and see this little symbol. Click on that. And now you can export the entire file. Master file is typically the one you want to go with. You can change that here. Uh, so look, we're only 111 megabytes. That's no big deal. It's in 1080p, which is really nice. Uh, you can change the settings. Let's say uh, self-tape walkthrough, no problem. 
just delete these things. You don't really need any of this information. That's just all filler stuff for your own categorization online. You go to your settings here. This right here, this video codec, H.264, this is the smallest video size you want to do. So like uh, you have all these other options here. This is for, you know, kind of high quality movie making stuff that you really don't need to pay attention to. You can always just sort of revert back to this video size, okay? Make sure you have video and audio selected so you get both components. And then when you're done, you hit next. Easy. You can choose where to save it. I'm going to save it on my desktop. Save. Okay, and that's it. Now, if you look over here, see this up here? Now, this is sharing, okay? So, we're just waiting for that. It's transcoding the whole thing. It's really quick. Done. Look at that. Ready to go. Okay, and now you have your self-tape. So, let's check that out one more time. Hi, my name is Chase Yee. Uh, I'm represented by the Brogan Agency. I'm based in Los Angeles, California, and I'm five foot nine. Thank you. You get the idea. So, that's basically it. Um, and then once you're done with that, let's move on to the next bit. Now we're in Actors Access, okay? So this is my Actors Access account. And I, I'm actually subscribed as a Plus member uh, because, you know, if you do so many auditions, you actually have to pay for the sides. They don't necessarily give them to you automatically. So, like, check this out. All my... These are all the auditions I've had, you know, so far uh, th around the year just from this platform okay and you can tell all these different things that are here they don't give you the sides for free so you would have to then go here go to get sides right and then you know type in the code that they provide you with find them download them and that costs money you know you can pay anywhere from like two dollars to ten dollars for sides and if you get so many auditions i mean you might as well just drop the extra 50 bucks for a year to have the plus membership level and then you get all those sides for free so that's something to consider but anyway, let's just say, for example, that, uh, let's see, this was a, I think this was just like a general open call thing, virtual open call. So, um, so this was just like a, an open call that I had got from my agent for, uh, you know, casting company. They're just like, cause this was, you know, since COVID hit, they were looking for new talent, just an open door thing. You can submit a self tape. And now check this out. Right down here, see where it says self tape tips? They're kind of giving you some tips that you can follow here too. You can check that out, you know, get a sense of what that's like. They had they provided me the sides here. I think I did this character, Miguel. I think that's the one I had done. Um, and then anyway, let's actually check this out. You can actually watch this. This was my uh, Miguel audition that I had put together here. Hi, my name's Chase Yee. Uh, I live in Los Angeles, California. I'm represented by the Brogan Agency, and I'm reading for the role of Miguel. You just get here? Yeah. What branch? Marines, yeah. Rangers. Don't hate. <clears throat> so how you doing? What about the dream? You looking for someone, or? So yeah, so that was one that I uploaded, you know, just like what we're going to do here. I don't really have, uh, actually, I'm not sure if I can... Yeah, let's see. Okay, so let's say in this one, upload media, right? So let's say we were going to do this. We'd go to browse here, go back to my desktop, find the audition I had just made. What was it? Self-tape walkthrough. Boom. Right? Open. And now it's uploading. Okay. And that's it. When you're done, I actually don't want to upload that because that's for something else completely. Uh, but once it uploads, all you'd have to go down to is next. You would confirm your upload, and then uh, before you know it, it's sent out to the casting director. Your agent should also get notified that you sent something in, and you're done. You've completed it. So it's a pretty easy process altogether. I would encourage you, you know, to get on Actors Access so you can start to get into the habit of doing this. You know, use different tools like Final Cut uh, with iMovie, whatever, just to stay agile. Another cool thing I think you should check out too, and this is just a little kicker. Um, I use. Uh, outside of like the main casting platforms is backstage.com. You should definitely check this platform out, if, especially if you're a new actor, you're getting started, you want to kind of learn how the process is, submitting yourself for roles. Backstage is a really great thing to, to get into. I have a profile on here so you can check it out. Let's take a look. Um, you know, you have a really great place to have all your materials. You can have your headshots, your skills that you that you use, you know, whatever representation that you have also you have links so like this is a link to my imdb page so if anybody clicks on that it sends them directly to my page here which has you know all my acting credits different projects and stuff that i've done 
uh, my video reels that I have uploaded. So you can check all those things out. I think it's a really great tool um, you know, to use backstage. And, and for the most part, it's just a really great way to amplify your chances of, of being successful. You can go to your casting calls thing here every day. All around the country, people are posting jobs and the different kind of roles that they need. So if you have all the equipment at home, you could audition for 50 things a day if you wanted to. On an unlimited amount of things you can audition for. And, you know, short films, things that they say, hey, we want new people. We, you don't have to have a lot of experience, whatever. Definitely get on here and, um, you know, do your best to, to maximize your chances of, of booking work. Well, there you have it, everybody. Uh, we just kind of went through the whole self-tape process. I hope that it helps you or gives you some insight into how you can make your self-tape auditions better. Um, and please know that I'm here to help. Uh, Doyen Artists, uh, my buddy and I, Josh, we're, we're super stoked to be able to bring content to everybody, to, to bring some inspiration and some value to everybody. And uh, please feel free to reach out. You can find us on Instagram, at Doyen Artists. Uh, you can contact me on Instagram at Chase Ye underscore. Same thing on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook, Doyen Artist. You know, wherever you interact with people online, we're there. So please, uh, you know, reach out to us. And, and just know that, like, you know, I understand. I, I know how challenging it can be. But this day and age, there are really no excuses. If you want to be an actor, if you want to be a, a professional, you know, hardworking, successful actor, you have to master these tools yourself, you know? Uh, you can use a smartphone, get a laptop, use a friend's laptop. I mean, somebody you know has this technology. So all you need to do is just kind of get it in your hands, find the time to, to learn how to use it and use it to the best of your abilities. I mean, I know that, like, like I said, not everybody maybe has an office where they can kind of move things around and, you know, film a self tape, but you can go into the alleyway outside, find someone's garage door that's white, you know, go into a department store that has a white wall and just set up for a few minutes. I mean, you have to be hungry, too, as an actor to be able to do these things. And, you know, I get it. You have to have some vulnerability because you have to put yourself in front of the camera all the time. And uh, I know it might feel a little silly when you're doing a self-tape somewhere strange, but... I mean, realistically, you have to make those sacrifices to make your dreams come true. So I hope this really helps. Again, reach out to us if you have any questions. I'm gonna be putting together a, a weekly acting tip for you, you know, throughout the rest of this month, every month. We're gonna be kind of coming at you with our, our vlog series on a regular basis, um, some acting content. Josh is putting together some really cool video, time-lapse content, different things we're gonna do. And then also every month, we're gonna release a new short film that our company produces. So I write a lot of scripts. We've been making a lot of cool short films. We have some things up already on the channel that you can watch. Our latest one is called Letters from the Heart that we just made. We're gonna get ready to officially kind of launch that soon. We have a documentary that we shot not too long ago. Uh, another really great project called Salt in the Wound that I wrote uh, starring Ashley Romans, who is a really great actress. She's on a new show called Nos 4A2, which is on AMC. I think they're going into the second season. So, you know, we, we work with a lot of other actors, right? And uh, if you're an actor, we'd love to see your work too. So you should reach out to us on Instagram. If you wanna send us a self tape, you know, for consideration for a project in the future, I'd be more than happy to check that out. So again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe below and we'll look forward to the next video. Okay, see ya.